September 19th. And uh, I'm going to call to order the regular select board meeting. First thing is set a just agenda. Um, I didn't see an item to approve the town manager's contract yeah. on here. But we're ready to do that, I believe. Yep. So can we add that as a. Adam, item seven, yep. Yeah. Okay. So accept and sign the town manager's contract, yep. And then um, Adam, <coughs> item eight. Um, adopt the resolution to apply for the BCDP grant for heartbeat and you just have to sign there's one it, the grant spends some no that was the MP one there's one more piece of this um, the grant application has been submitted and then they're just requesting additional information and I have it here. Got it. so we have that as I mean yep anybody have anything else uh, we have a motion approved in that says amended. So moved. Mm. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. <coughs> Danny. Mm. Aye, yeah. Okay, so that's everyone. Mm -hmm. um, we have an adjusted agenda. Next communication, or, uh, communication from the audience. I suspect that our limited audience is not here to communicate during this session part of the meeting. Um, uh, okay, so we have a bunch of minutes to approve. So we have minutes from the public hearing about the bylaws. That was September, this is all September 5th. The public hearing about the BCDT grant for uh, Heartbeat and the regular select board minutes, meeting minutes. You can pass them Motion on. to approve them all. Okay. Second. Excellent. I had one small change that I you know the KC and she said she fixed it. Yep, so, six. Um, all in favor of approving all three sets of minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Oh, motion carries. Next town manager report, Mr. Upson. Yep. Um, our community development coordinator is working with our energy co coordinator and the NBDA rep for the municipal energy resilience program grant uh, this is we had uh, energy assessments done on all our town buildings earlier this summer um, we received those from the consultant uh, the group the MERP grant is uh, due on the 27th and we're putting together the application now um, we are eligible for up to five hundred thousand dollars we are a high burden high energy burden town um, and this was going to be for a selected list of towns, but then just recently they extended the deadline a week and opened it up to all towns of the month. So we're gonna submit um, projects for energy, uh, projects for the furnace uh, up in the um, public safety building. Uh, we're gonna um, do some energy uh, work down in this building and then uh, the depot and the townhouse. We are uh, considered, or I might have said this, we're, we're considered a high energy usage town. So we have high heating bills. So we're, we're gonna try to lower those with these projects. Um, the total ask is gonna be about $350,000 uh, for the projects. And because they opened it up to all the towns, we'll see what we get and what we can do. Is there a match on that money? No, or? no match. Wow. Yep. It's a, a BGS yep. is doing the grant, administering the grant, and it's part of the, the climate goals. Great. Yep. Um, I've got, we had on Monday night, we had our neighbor to neighbor meeting, um, which went well. One of the things that came out of the neighbor to neighbor meeting was the group of residents from Cottage Street and Granite Street. Uh, with like more of an early warning system for um, flooding in the area. So we've resurrected um, the old siren at the firehouse. Um, we've dug that out. Uh, the guys got it over to Barrel Electric today and they're gonna look at it. It's been through two floods and it came out of the firehouse due to the firehouse going from um, single phase or uh, three phase down to single phase so it's not um, we can't put it at the firehouse, but we can find another, pl another place in town for it, depending how much it's gonna cost to fix. Um, so there's more to come on that. Uh, I might have said this last week, but we have a, the sidewalk grant 
that was due um, that they said they weren't gonna um, <coughs> extend. They've extended it. Okay. So we have another year to do that work. Um, I signed the amendment today. Um, the lead service inventory update, uh, all Rich and Elliott are, we're, we're trying to do as much in-house as we can on the list. We're probably gonna end up having to go door to door um, in October um, so we can get this submitted. Uh, it's gonna be a, a, a hard deadline. Uh, we haven't had much response back. I think we're doing some public messaging um, to try to you know, garner some responses from the public. Uh, our buyouts, our FEMA buyouts are moving forward. We've reached the point where the money's available to pay for inspections and appraisals, so we're doing that. Uh, one step closer to getting the uh, building down on Brush Street. And the last thing, the Riverside Farm Bridge should be done tomorrow or Monday at the latest. They built the deck at their shop up in Lindenville and brought it over uh, the last couple of days. So have you seen that? Mm -mm. Yeah. So they've made a considerable amount of progress on it and it should be all good to go. Wow. Yep. Any questions? That's a lot of stuff. It's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yep. Great. Thank you. Questions? <coughs> um, next is town uh, road foreman report given by Tom Batten. <coughs> yeah. uh, I don't remember where I left off since, since I've been here. Uh, I know we installed a new six foot culvert down on Nichols Road. I don't remember if, if I said that before or not. Uh, we went from four to six out there, uh, oh, 40 feet bad. wide. Yeah. yeah, so that's a lot better out there and stuff. Uh, ditch work, uh, we've completed ditch work on Cobb School. That's all completely done. Stage house, we redid that entire road and ditched on that. That was part of one of the grants. Grant uh, aid. Yep. Grant and aid project. <clears throat> so we did that. Uh, ditched the entire length of Cape Brook Road, got, got that all back, put, put back together. We did another uh, place by uh, Gates Trail uh, that's uh, right by Helen, Helen Gates there. The bank slid down next to the box culvert, so we got that all put back together. Billings Road, we got that all ditched and redone. Uh, let's see, had two water leaks that we've been dealing with that we got fixed. We fixed the water problem over here by the rail trail, so that's all reconnected back. So hopefully that will take care of the water running down through. Uh, this week we hauled winter sand in all week, so we're completely done with that. Crusher is, should be moving in maybe tomorrow or maybe early next week. He's waiting on permits right now. So just as soon as we get that, we'll be hauling gravel and beat the band, so. Where are we with um, blasting and crushing uh, blasting's been done. Yep, we've uh, blasted about 5,500 yards of rock. And is the crusher going to crush it? They're going to do a sample run. That's about all they got time to do. So basically, they're going to squeeze in what they can do in there. But like you said, they're going to have to go through and pick and pick you know the bigger stuff out since we don't have a hammer there. Uh, so they'll try to crush up some of the smaller stuff just to see what kind of product that we are getting out of it and we'll go, go from there so and, and we're going to want to keep some of the bigger rock for bigger arm bank stabilization bank stabilization normally there's a sort of so, stage in between so yeah. we're processing crush yeah we're going to yeah. okay we're going to pick we're going to do a, like tom said a little sample see how it comes out and mm -hmm. then through that we'll they'll, they'll sort it, a, a small portion of it yeah okay is there any update on the crosswalk at down on Wilkins Street that the one side got knocked down? No, no update. The, it's just an open PD case. Uh, it was a hit and run. Uh, so we'll have to make an insurance claim for an uninsured driver to get that back up. Which one? I don't know. I can't remember. I know the only other uh, the, the other road that we did was Smith Farm. That's all completely re reditched. We went from a two foot up to a three foot culvert on that one. So hopefully that would take care of some of that problem there of that being flooded too. So. Okay. Let's see. 
Yep. Any other questions for Tom? Thank you. Uh, looks like Mike Henry's not here. I do have. Do you have something? I do have one more update. Yes, go ahead. Um, on the Cary Road property. Oh yeah. So um, we're the the buyer has decided to do a um, title search. Yeah because we are offering a quick claim deed, yep. not a warranty deed. Yep. So they're just doing their due diligence. Um, As well they should. Yep, and so we're just, we're, we're waiting on them and I've been in contact with them. Great. And uh, Vermont Huts, um, I've sent back the option uh, with edits and we're just negotiating the final touches of that so we can sign that and close that deal. Great. Awesome. Yeah. We've been getting some press recently the, the but, Montreal. Yeah. Months. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, next, Harvard Electric Department report given by Miles Kanchar Cove 2 called me and said he needed to have an emergency root canal, so he's not here, but he sent oh. me. Ouch. Yes. I mean, that's we're bad. But that's yeah. <laughs> I think you still should be able to do the report. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> so I can give the report if people want, or at least I can give, I can read off the bullets. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Here are the bullets. These really come from Scott Johnstone, right? Who's our, um, who's our acting GM. Uh, so, customer no. projects, the commission approved an updated policy of cost sharing and customer projects instead of 100% of the cost of the upgraded like before. Like transformers. Yeah, but wait for the other to get done. Our delivery will now cost share based on the value of the device being removed. I don't know if everyone's aware, but they did have a policy where if you need a bigger transformer, for example, you have to buy the full cost of the new transformer, even if the one they were taking down was almost new. So somebody else. Now you're only going to pay the incremental cost between the old one and the new one. Hmm. Um, they're moving forward now with the advanced metering infrastructure, the, um, the electronic meters that they can read remotely. And this is partly because um, there are new requirements that they're going to have to re comply with for renewable energy and electrification. Um, the project is going to occur in 2026. <coughs> They're also implementing um, a GIS and outage management system that will enable customers to know when power is lost and when it comes back on, and that's going to allow HED to prioritize and manage big storm events. Um, I had those for years. It's called white bulb. A light bulb. Yeah, when it goes off, you're out of power. Yep. Mm -hmm. When it comes back on, you get power. Yep. It's supposed to be something different. Yeah, because I think it gives Hardwick Electric um, information about Ooh, where on exactly. every one. So, so instead of going by and looking for light bulbs. <coughs> right, which yeah. is what they did as well. Yes, yeah, it is. But it so gives them a yeah. way to coordinate right. and right. Which, a little yeah. better. So yeah, that makes perfect good sense right there. Yep. Um, and also, they said once it, if the system's in place, it gives them new ways to communicate with customers if customers want, like text and email or whatever. Right. Mm. Um, so you don't have to call Texas anymore to find out whether or not you have power back? Right. Mm. Well, your email in Texas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're doing some repairs and upgrades. They're doing a uh, roof on the build office over here and on the shop down there. They traded in a big pickup in F-250 that was not conducted to meter reading for a Ranger. And that will make them a little more fuel efficient. Um, staffing, they were down to a crew of two, I think, three months ago, and now they're up to a full complement of six, including two new first-class linemen who live in our service terri to territory. Yep. So they're pretty happy about that. We talked to Brian this morning. He's very happy about that. Yeah, sounds good. Um, also, they went to the flood meeting that uh, Opie referenced on, that was Monday night? Yep. Um, they said they were, uh, Scott says Jackson Dan came Tracks and Dan came up a lot, and um, Ted has no objection to select board considering options uh, for an assessment, and they'll participate as necessary. The GM search, uh, they continue to receive and review potential candidates. They'll let us know when they have final interviews. 
Ooh. Could you send that to me, Eric? I, I will send that to you. That'd be great. Let me do that. You didn't get all that. There's no <laughs> reason, right? Yeah, no. Um, okay. Good but, job. Uh, <laughs> any questions for Hardwood Electric? So many, yeah, but our rates yeah. can go down. Yeah, you can just wait. I, don't know. I, um, I think our rates are going up. Don't they have a rate case in? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <clears throat> um, oh, I did hear one other thing that wasn't in that report. They're also moving forward on the Wilka Dam Hydro, um, and they're going to have to do something about the penstock because the first, the flood last year washed all the topsoil or whatever yeah. the soil off the top of it, and the flood this year. Damage the tent stock itself. Yep. So, well, it's because it was empty. Because yes, and because it was empty. Yep. So it was floaty. Yep. Hmm. All those things. All right. Next item one. Uh, our assessor Matt's here to present two errors and omissions requests um, for us to consider approving. They were in our packet. Matt, you know, before. Can I stand up. Yep. Yeah, uh, as you like. Okay. So um, I can go one by one through them if you want to take action one by one, or I can just go through both of them. And I read them both. They both make perfect sense. Yeah, like both of them. Okay. So the first one is a property owned by Brian and Debbie M. Lacasse. It's located at 571 Dimmick Road. Uh, parcel ID 07027-00030. The current assessment on that parcel is 142,700. I'll keep it real simple just because you have the summary here there in front of you, but basically we had a survey that was filed before April 1st of 24 that was brought to our attention. The parcel right now is being assessed with 11 acres of land. The survey suggests 9.35 acres of land. So when I make that adjustment, it yields an answer of 141,200. So that is number one. And number two is a parcel owned by Julie A. Clements. It's located at 103 Pleasant Street, parcel ID 06075-00000. The current assessment on that parcel is 142,600. Uh, similar to the first one that I just described, this parcel is being assessed with five acres of land. A survey that was recorded prior to April 1st of 24 suggests there are 2.53 acres of land in total. So that would reduce the assessment to $136,000 even. So both are based on surveys that were recorded prior to April 1st. I'm basically just asking that you approve those changes. And um, what I ultimately have to do is, and I'll probably have to do this Monday, is I have to send both property owners change of appraisal notices, uh, basically opening the grievance process just to the two owners of those parcels anyway. So, um, as long as they're accepted tonight, I'll do that Monday. We can get revised tax bills out in conjunction with the notices. <clears throat> motion. motion to do such. I have one question. We're going to oh, okay. that. Yeah, motion first? Yeah, move Second. to Second. accept Second. the omissions. Yep. So, just curiosity, when you say prior to April 1st, were they new surveys or just they had old surveys that came to light that? They were new surveys. So for some reason they had new surveys done because they suspected their assessment was incorrect. Uh, whether it was whether it had to do with their assessment or estate planning or it, it's hard Something. to comment yeah, right. on exactly why they had, okay. had it yep. done anyways. But, but they had a new survey and it turns out that it was a yeah it could have been a long standing dispute. Correct. Yeah. One of them, I believe, I'm going off of memory. One of them, I think, was filed in March. Yeah, March that's, of 24. That's fine. I just was wondering what the what brought this about? So, uh, yeah. what what really brought them about is when tax bills went out. It obviously is going to read what the acreage total is right. in the right hand corner. So we've got the. That's what I'm saying. That's what triggered. That's what triggered them saying, we were always had 2.7 acres or whatever. Yeah. So that's what triggered the whole thing. And exactly. then they then they had surveys to right. prove the surveys yeah. were right. We're done. Yeah. And then we should have made the change prior to grant list being lodged. So we're still working on some of our practices in the offices anyway. So the clerks have been really helpful here so far. Yeah. They give us all copies of the transfers, the deeds. We're trying to work out kind of a new way though, where when still. surveys get filed, we're alerted to that. We right. make the change prior, just so I don't have to stand in front of you and do errors and omissions all the time in regards to them. Yep. Great. Cool, thank you. And I have, uh, I don't know whether or not we want to get a signature on each one of them now. Or I mean, we're going to do a vote. 
Right here. Oh, yes. sorry. Excuse me. Okay. Jumping the gun on you. Um, any other discussion? Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second to approve the errors and emissions for both properties. Um, all in favor of approving them, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Was Sherry the second on that? Uh, no. Tim. Okay. Uh, next. Oh, thank you for bringing that to us. Thank you. Oh, no worries at all. Am I, am I moving on or you had something else? I'm all set otherwise. The only thing I was going to do is if you want me to, I can grab those from you. Yep. Put the signature on them and I'll just give you the final you want to do that. Yep. yep. Okay, I perfect. Them, so. Hey, Great. thank you, boss. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank Thanks. you. Um, oh, no, you don't get to leave. <laughs> Oh, sure. yep. We had to just hold out little votes to the end of the meeting next now on. <laughs> Make them all stay. All right. Next, I'm going to move us on item two. Emily Finnegan is is I, uh, where is here uh, the district manager from Caledonia County Natural Resources Conservation District (NRCD) to discuss the study, a possible study on Jackson Dam. Right. Where's the best spot? And anywhere you like. Okay, we're coming a little closer. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Emily Finnegan from the County of County NRCD. Um, we're a conservation district, so we cover the whole state. There's 14 of us. We typically work with towns, landowners, agricultural producers to facilitate access to funding for clean water related projects. Um, so we do all kinds of different projects, um, and dam removals is one area of project that we have worked with in the past. Um, so I know that Kristen Leahy came to the select board previously and asked if the if the board would be open to um, uh, to would be open to a study about the Jackson Dam, um, and she got preliminary approval. But then I was like, oh, I kind of want to come meet everyone and try to get a real sense of what information you want from that, and that will dictate sort of what types of funding sources I can access. And then I also wanted to. Uh, with a project like this, it's good to have, in the past I've worked with like one contact on the select board. I'm thinking for this particular project, it would be good to have like one person or a group of people that's willing to like really dig into this and make sure that um, the, the sources of funding I'm accessing and the information I'm trying to get from, it would probably be a subcontract with an engineer, is what the community wants. Um, so it would be a little more involved than just like one contact on the select board. So that's kind of what I'm here to, to chat about. I put a few like examples of studies that are possible. Yeah. Um, they're just examples. They kind of give you a sense of like the directions that the, that the board could go, the town could go. Uh, what we want will dictate the funding sources that can fund them. In particular, if you're interested in a cost estimate of and a, and a sense of what it would take to repair the dam or restore the dam. Um, then clean water, dam removal, Lake Clean Basin Program, none of those would fund that. They only fund removal. That doesn't mean you have to remove, it just means they only fund a study that considers the impacts of removal. Um, so. So what do we want? What do you want? <laughs> I can tell you what I want. That was my question earlier, who wants yeah. what? So <laughs> why are we even talking? So what I, what I would like, just as a per as as me, I guess not as, as a select as a, as a citizen of the town. As a citizen, as a citizen of the town, yeah. and after talking to other people, yeah, I yeah. think after the two recent floods, the big question that keeps coming up is: would, is Jackson Dam helping or hurting us during these flood, flood events? I mean, I don't I don't hear anybody saying, I, "Oh my God, it's you know this, I, this huge yeah. thing that that's a big I, problem." No, I think we've got a lot of other areas that I would love to talk about prior to. The dam, unless someone could tell me that you know, the dam's a problem, which I have never heard. Well, I, I, I've talked to a bunch of people on that, and I think there's three major concerning areas, kind of starting upstream, ending at Jackson Dam, which is a concerning one of would it actually help to remove it, um, helping the flooding, whether that's... Yeah, I, I don't, my, my, my thinking is it's really low on... If I'm gonna rank three things to do, that's number three. If I rank eight things to do, that's number eight because you know the Black Bridge and the LBRT and the fact that when you look at the Lamoille River on Walker Street and it's the, the base of the river is two feet higher, you know, in front of the diner, down by the diner and Daniel's Bar, there's three feet of, it's three feet higher than it was two years ago because of all the, the stuff that's settled right there. So there's a lot of things that are contributing to the flooding that are 
way upstream of that dam. So uh, it's my understanding that the Lamoille RPC is working with a few other RPCs to do a study, like a flood. From what, from what I understand, it's similar to the flood that study that was just completed in Lindenville, which relates to, like, they looked at two specific locations, lowering flood levels in those locations, and what could we do to do that? And they did a bunch of combos of different projects and single projects, and, like, what would have the most impact and be feasible. It seems like, from what you're saying, like, that's more the direction you're interested in going and, and potentially considering the Jackson Dam if it falls into if it falls into the category of potentially lowering flood levels, and if that's what that yeah. study will cover. And I, and I understand from the person who's commissioning it that, or the person from Memorial RPC who I talked to, that it does, the, the study does have money to consider three to five alternatives analysis, which could include the Jackson Dam. So it could include what I'm talking about, if the Jackson Dam does lower flood levels. So I'm, I'm kind of hearing like that's more, rather than separating that out, does the jack does the reservoir behind the dam fall in the whole working landscape of the actual dam? So a study of <laughs> the reservoir behind. Ah, uh, good question. Harvick Lake, you're talking. Yeah. Yeah. What we call Harvick Lake. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's go. He said that it's going down the Lamoille main stem to Cooper Brook to 1.5 miles down Cooper Brook. So so no, I don't think it would go up Alder Brook through you know through Harvick Lake. Mm -hmm. So that's a good question. You know, that's so <clears throat> just my just thinking sitting here talking about it very just for a few minutes. So when when we have floods, nothing is the there's no extra water going up all the brook. You see, it's the, it doesn't flood up there. You see what I'm saying? The dam isn't holding. It does though. It it the well the, it doesn't to the, the freeboard. In my opinion, the freeboard left in Hardwick Lake, the loss yeah. of the freeboard in the lake yeah. has pushed the floodwaters further north. But, but and, it's not and doing any damage. And back, no, there's, there's storage. Right. Uh, there's well, people that might disagree with that. Yeah, there are, there's Ooh, one specific whole. person who I Ooh, would think would disagree. Yeah. Two Divine Falls. Oh, we paid for him a bit, sorry, so we're good. So, um, our role, or sorry, the, the select board's role in this is, you know, as the municipal corporation, but this asset is owned by the, the utility. Um, would you, or have you spoken with them? The landscape has changed over there a little bit. You know, we've gotten approval to even have this conversation. Um, and I think, I, think, I think it's important that we make sure that they're looped into all this decision making as well. Yeah. I, yes. I can't speak for the board, but I think, no, it's, right. I think it's fair. No, yeah, and, and they just reported that they're open to the discussion, yeah. so that's. Yeah, so I just want that for the record, that yeah. HED is also on board with mm -hmm. us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I wouldn't have come here if I didn't know that. Yeah, good, <laughs> good, good. I know a little bit about the history of the, of the So I'm not against anything, if anything, if it's free. Tim says it's free. They are all, yeah, and um, I, that would be my goal. At least to our But I, I, would, I, would, I would like to, it would be great to figure out you know, if it's a concern or if it's a necessity to improve. Right now, I think flood, flood control is the biggest thing that we need to be concerned about. Keeping or removing the dam because that's the way you feel is, is irrelevant. It's, is, it, is, it, is it causing us problems or is it something that we don't have to deal with, right deal with the resources because we'd love to have your resources somewhere else probably, I'm sure. Well, and that makes sense because there are other benefits for removing the dam, and, and what you want to know is are there flood benefits? If there are not, then maybe we have that conversation later. You yeah. know, because there are habit there are definitely habitat benefits, and there could be fisheries benefits, right. and water, and there's all kinds of other benefits to removing the dam. That's not to say you should, but uh, I, I think there is a question about whether or not there are flood control benefits. Yeah. So I, I guess the other question I would have, if we were commissioning a study, would be. Um, we, we the, the town, as the owner of the Harvick Electric Department, we also own another dam in Pottersville and Wolka mm -hmm. that actually is useful and generates electricity, mm -hmm. unlike the, the Jackson Dam, and does have a fair amount of sediment build up behind it. So if the Jackson Dam is gone, does that change the sediment transport in the river? And what impact does that have on the Pottersville Dam? Mm -hmm. And that would be part of any 
any study that would just it sure it right? surely because does because sediment management is like the number one thing you have to deal with when you think right and I mean and and I, I think it's got to have right because it retains water and settles sediment yeah, settles one that's why we have a study yeah, yeah. yeah. study it Tim study yeah. it it's free I'm not that, that's like my there there <laughs> historically there's been four other studies done on this dam in the recent past Mm-hmm. How would how would this one be different from the four that have been done? Yeah, and how we can how how can we maximize? Yeah, what's useful in those studies? I mean, some of the wildlife stuff has got to be you know that was not done that long ago. So where I don't know. Yeah, these would be more focused on process and and measuring effects. So from what. If I have the same resources that you do, which I think I have all the ones that all the stuff that's been done mm-hmm. in the past, I didn't see any cost estimates. I didn't see any hydraulic modeling. I didn't see any like um, here you could remove half of the dam, you could remove the whole dam, you could you know th- there right. were no. Th- it wasn't none of those studies were big removal studies. Yeah, and they. Didn't, I mean that wasn't the point of those. They weren't. <laughs> I, I'm not sure how you would take action from any of those studies. Like I think they were pretty they're informative. Sure, but I think an alternative analysis or a feasibility study, you know, there are numbers attached to those. Like, this is how much it would cost, here's how long it would take, here's that, based on our modeling on a computer, here's what we think would happen downstream. Right. Um, it, could, it could tell you, you know, if, if flooding was something you're interested in, that could be incorporated. It's kind of like, however, whatever information right. you would want to incorporate, that's what, yeah, what layer would you be incorporated. In yeah. So from the flooding standpoint, I'm all in. So it sounds like, right, am I correct, and am I hearing that right now we don't have any other ongoing project that analyzes the flooding impact of retaining or removing Jackson Dam and Heart of Lake? We don't have any. In all the road. I would need to confirm that that Lamoille Arkansas yeah. study would not cover okay. that. And the only other. The only other thing would be the study that they're going to go, hopefully, we're, we're, we're asking them to go as far up the Lamoille River Basin as possible. I don't, we don't know how far they're going to go. It's not that much farther. Or down. Yes. Yeah, so no, further up the basin. They're, they're studying the Lamoille, they're from Lamoille <coughs> County up. Yeah. So they've stopped, I believe, at the Jackson Dam in the past, but we've asked them to go further. They're, Seth told me like yesterday or the day before that they're going to go to Cooper Brook, a mile and a half down Cooper Brook. Okay. Yeah. So that means so they'll that go would past cover the it, area. but they're not going to go to Hardwick Lake, which that's a question. Like I don't uh, think they would. You have to go through Hardwick Lake yeah, to get Cooper Brook. No. Are mm-hmm. they coming up? Cooper Brook? Cooper Brook is firehouse. By the firehouse. By the firehouse. By the firehouse. Um, but you're coming from the Lamoille, which is yes. that comes up. That's yeah. upstream of, of the Jackson Dam. If they're coming, doing the study from Lamoille, yeah. from Morrisville, they're going to be coming up through. Yeah. And but they're going, to the, they're going to the Lamoille River. They're not going to the Alda Brook Way. That's but, but that's area that's impounded by well, Jackson Dam is kind of indistinguishable from the river, isn't it? I don't know I what their deal is, but if well, I understand what she, I mean, okay. I, yeah, I don't know the answer, but I understand what she's saying. She's saying they're taking the Lamoille, yeah. they're taking the right. And they might not go they're up. Not and they're not going up. Like so it's certainly not going to go all the way to that That's not what we're talking about. Yeah. The continuing up the Lamoille River Basin, uh-huh. all the way up to Greensboro Bend. Okay. That's what and, you're, and you're asking for. That's yeah. what the LCP, the Lamoille County Planning Commission, that's what they're, they put in a, a CDS request for this study. Excuse me. <laughs> Was it approved? Not sure. I think that's the real question that we don't know. Is yeah. like, it, and I think if it's not, I think if that's not the case, if that study would not include the ability to know if Jackson Dam is, low, is affecting flood levels, then we're talking about a, something separate that I, depending on how you want to frame it, I could probably find funding for it and have it focus on. Because they might be just the dams there, and we're, our study is going to be the dams there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Huh? So what they're studying, the study yeah. you're talking about, the river study, yeah. is is not a dam study. The no. dam's there, so that study will show the dam there, staying yeah. there, be there. So that's their gig. They're going up and taking a right and going around. What we're talking about is the dam in Alderbrook 
at the watershed from the dam or the well, water storage. Well, they're both and the Mono River are coming in there. Yeah, but I, I'm i with you. <laughs> Yeah. Happens a lot around here where it's on now by myself. <laughs> oh, come on. Or in my own little world. No, yes. not in a bad way. <laughs> oh, just in Her and I are up. Another thing to consider is that in my experience, with the, I don't know how much money they have for this monoscopic study, but in my experience with the Linden study, they, they acknowledged the Vail Dam, but didn't have enough money to really vigorously right. study it. And Do the things that she's really talking about. <clears throat> in downtown Lindenville. So that was kind of my other hesitation in just banking on this memorial main stem study to get the information that you need. Because um, I so. don't, I'm not aware of other huge concerns with that dam. I mean, it doesn't, I know that some people don't like it being there because it obstructs the road, flow of the river and so you don't have natural ri river habitat. On the other hand, it, it does create a small lake and there are people who like to go birding on the right. lake and there's, right. there's the bird habitat there that right. wouldn't be there. So... And I think there's a continuing concern from DEC about the lake levels moving up and down. I yep. think that kind of messes with habitat and wildlife. But again, yep. it's not, you know, Something like this yeah. has to be a concern of the community or an interest of the right. community. There's going to be and flood different levels would probably be the, inter the entry point for that interest. I think it's the biggest thing, and I think yeah. we don't, I can't imagine right. us asking for an estimate to repair it. We just want to know what would it look like if it was removed. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, there's no repair there. No, well, no, no do. it doesn't. Yeah. Well, it's classified as a significant hazard dam, and there, the inspection report from 2019 has a lot of suggestions about how to repair right. it. And they're revising the dam safety rules now, and I, my, it's my understanding that by next summer they would have some mechanism for enforcement, but they don't have that now, and who knows what that mechanism would be, and so, what significant yeah. dams would be enforced. Right. It's not the highest hazard class. Unless there's a significant reason to keep the dam to reduce flooding. That's the only reason I personally would be in or have any, you know what I'm saying? And oh, the study came back and said, boy, that dam But if you take you. it out, right, right that's yeah. why it was put in. Well, they was put in to control, came. yeah, for the power house, for the power Are station. Sure it wasn't to control Yeah, it was to control the water downstream. levels downstream. Word on the street is that it was put in for flood control. Well, mm -hmm. they failed. <laughs> Dramatically, this, this I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm just. Starting in 1927, they failed dozens of times. So more so in many more ways. Yeah. So yeah. If, I mean, if it's if it's if it has value, without, I mean, to my knowledge, other than a, a few people's personal feelings about whether it should be there or should not be there, the only thing that stopped really stopped it from disappearing previously was the funding. Because there's been efforts that have been really close to removing it until it got to how we're going to pay to remove it. So that's and then the they died. The question I have is if we commission a study and you're able to get us funding and get it, get the study done and the study comes back and says, boy, you should really remove this dam, uh, or that's our interpretation of it, and it has a cost estimate, which is going to be some number of millions of dollars because knowing doesn't buy you much anymore. So uh, is there funding for dam removal? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Particularly if it would open up. So there's kind of like two main pathways. There's clean water and fish passage. So particularly if it would open up a significant fishery for brook trout, that's where there's some federal money available. Um, and then there's, there, there's lots of reasons to remove a dam. Therefore, there's more funding sources. Right. Okay. Because you can sort of access, you know, it would take a combination for sure. And you know, the goal would be to have the town not pay anything. Um, and that's happened in other communities, for sure. The, the state is like into dam removals right now. <laughs> okay. and is it possible to kind of piggyback on top of that and look at, you know, if we remove the dam, what other flood mitigation could we do? You know, we talk about kind of flood benching into that area, the heart of lake. I don't know if that's something that would have to be totally separate or could we combine those? And no, site restoration would definitely be part of the whole thing. So yeah, for sure. It wouldn't just be like excavator smashing the concrete and <laughs> Of course, He's but, it's, but it's like, you know, if we could do some more stuff upstream, yeah. that would also, con you know, yeah. help. Because to Danny's point, there's three, four, ten different places that we could do a lot of work to yeah. mitigate flood hazard. Yeah. And, yeah. and it might be in 
you know, combination with the with the dam removal. But yeah, it it'd be made, a shame to yeah, do that it made work. sense within the scope of the dam removal. Yeah, it could be included in the scope. You know that you would have to add funding to do that, but yeah, sure, it's all possible now. <laughs> and from where I sit, there's lots of different sources for dam removal funding, um, and it would just be a matter of waiting around for them to be available. Sure. <laughs> So, I have one question. Go ahead. Um, the difference between the alternatives analysis yeah. and the feasibility study, do you need some differentiation from that from the board as to what they're asking? Um, I think the two things I'm mostly wondering are like, so uh, how much information do you want? Because an alternatives analysis is more expensive and gives you more information. And then it sounds like there isn't really an interest in getting information on what it would cost to repair the dam. Like, that's not really a an option you're interested in seriously considering. Well, unless for some reason that you have to. In the, or it, either we have to, or it would help a flooding situation somehow. Mm -hmm. Which I, I can't see that way. way. Seems unlikely, and you could, you could get funding to do one of those options, and then um, it, th that, that study may say something like that, it, because it would also consider how it would affect flooding in town. It's kind of sounding to me like, I don't know if, if the, a feasibility study could have a cost estimate. It's kind of sounding like, to me, like a feasibility study might be the right step, because it's kind of like the first step in this process. And it has a number associated to it. It has like, here's the different things it might do. We could incorporate, like, would it affect flooding? Um, there are ways to have it get the information that you want. Um, and it's less expensive. Than an alternatives analysis. And an alternatives analysis funding assumes removal. Um, and, and there's usually like a stopping, with the one funding source I, I looked at, there was like a stopping point in the contract where they were like, if you're not going to remove this dam, you got to stop. We're going to stop spending money on it, basically. Because our purpose is remo removal, and so if the town doesn't want to do that, then we're not going to keep going, basically. Um, yeah. So, okay. so I guess it depends on how much information you want right now. Sherry? What? Uh, what do you think? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's never bad to have more information, information and data, and I feel like we don't, do I, I at least don't know how that can impact us. Well, we have four studies now, <clears throat> so yeah, one more. I think this, no, one I more think ain't Emily, gonna hurt. Emily phrased it well that those mm. studies were well, that's what I'm saying. but they didn't provide any actionable um, so that's what I'm saying this will give us a snapshot in time of, of what it would cost and it well, certainly yeah. would, what, what it would take and you know if it doesn't we decide not to move forward now we'll have that information yeah um, and it could be you know the good thing about numbers is they can always be easily bumped up a little you know once you have once you have the plan the numbers can be Look no, at you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So the BB cost numbers. Co yeah, yeah you just numbers. you've got your volume. Right. You got all your numbers. You know how much right. it takes to build this house. We need 25 two by fours. They're three dollars now. We build it. They're six dollars. Do the math, yeah. people. Would you like to make a motion? I have sure. a question. Yes, Casey. Um, so, so what it is? But <laughs> um, our, who's managing the process of the feasibility? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it would be the conservation district okay. the funding. Yeah. Yay. Um, and so what about like finding somebody to do the study, like the RFP? Are you doing all of that? Totally. Like, yes. Work? Yes. It would, Kristen would not have to do that, which is like kind of why we've been talking to each other. So because we could take, like the district could take on that project. What makes you think Kristen does that? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's all she does. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think she sent out one RFP. <laughs> no, but the, the office is inundated with yes. this type of work, this yes. post flooding, and um, it's become a real issue for us. Like, how do we manage that workload? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, and it, especially, I think to me, it's especially appealing if your office manages the yeah. whole thing. Well, we, yeah, if you want to present us with a report, that's yeah. great. Right. As much, I just, that's yes. why I just wanted to know like what was going to be expected from us. You have to write the report. Keith. Well, you have to tell me what you think <laughs> a lot and like respond to emails. That's, that's like the primary thing. Um, yeah, so I would do it with as much support. You know, I've done different projects with different levels of town involvement, right, depending on how much they care about the project or care about each step of the project, right? 
So from what you're hearing from us, it sounds like to you it sounds like you were leaning toward a feasibility study as something to recommend and, and you think our interest in um, primarily in flooding aligns with some funding sources that would help us mm -hmm. determine yeah, the feasibility I'm, of removing it and what that means. Yep. Okay. I'm thinking that could be incorporated into feasibility analysis. I'd have to check with some engineering firms that I work with. You know, probably what I probably what I would do after this is try to talk to the Seth for the from the oil RPC and get a real sense of like what what his timeline is, what kind of things he would consider. And if the Jackson Dam is going to be considered in that in the way that you're interested in, then I don't know that it's worth me taking an extra study to do this since flooding is your is your focus. Um, it, or it could be because I could get the information faster and there's funding to get it. <laughs> and know? then you could yeah. blend it into the totally. process. Right, right. Yeah. It, could be, yeah. it, could be, it could be separate from that. And then the next step I would take is to try to figure out from an engineering firm like what um, if what you are interested in is possible within a feasibility study and then therefore what about what that would cost. Mm -hmm. And then I would try to think about what funding sources would be best to support that. And the couple that I'm thinking of are due pretty soon, so I would probably do that like you can jump on it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what do you need from us? So at some point I would need a letter of support that just says like, you know, Emily talk to us, we're interested in this information, we're ready to participate, I guess. Mm -hmm. I could even write it. I usually write it for people and then they sign it. Okay, um, that's good. And then I also would want to know at this point, like, do you want to be the people that I talk to about everything? Do you want me to loop in the conservation commission? You know, I don't I don't know like how much they meet or if that's like something they want to take on. I've talked to them about it before. Um, I think that'd be a prime place I, to have some I think it might be a good idea potentially to put together a working group mm -hmm. for one of like a member of the select board, a member of the plant, yeah. a member of the board of commissioners yeah. Yeah. and conservation commission. Yep. Yeah. 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 Like four yeah. person. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Sounds great. Okay. We can um, we can strong arms. Uh, pick those folks out. Okay. And put them together. Yeah, because I would want you know the other letter of support Chris. or interest would be yeah. from Harvard Electric, so yeah. I would, would want to have a good contact person from there as well. Who's interested in being part of the process? Yeah, a working group would be great. Someone who's people who are who I know when I ask them questions or they've been following it, they're interested in it. Not that you all would think of lots of things to do mm -hmm. on the select board, so. Great, so we can get that group together. What else do you need from us to proceed? Um, I think that would be good, that's good for now. Okay. Um, so do we need a motion for uh, approving? town manager to sign a letter of uh, support? Or a support. letter of support, do we need to do that later? And you want the oh, she said two on weeks. She's, she's moving and shaking. She ain't messing around. That's true. Well, so. it's the grant sources. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. I've got all about it. But we, we don't meet again until um, October. So we can just authorize OP to so sign. So we, we could authorize the town manager to sign a letter of support on our behalf. Okay. So moved. Second. <laughs> all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So the grant is to the, the NRCD? So we would be the applicant. Um, the grant source, I have to decide. Yeah. <laughs> I have to so would we be like a sub-recipient then? Um, we don't. That's a good question. If you want to be, I think I could. We don't want to be. Yeah, no, not, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I would hit all of a Class. Yeah. yeah, you can just say, <laughs> like, Jason, you're not going to have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> all of our flood recovery projects. Like I was just going to say. Like we did the stormwater project. That yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if it's not federal funding, I'll do it. But federal funding is very hard to work with. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Great. I think that's all great. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, next, item three, representatives from the Judah Vine Memorial Library are here to give an update on the library expansion project. Have you got an extra one of those? In the packet, there's one. Oh, there's in the packet? Yeah. <clears throat> 
right so I got to say it. I'm sorry. I got asked a question. Yeah. So the, you're asking a question before the cookie we thieves are over here to use the bathroom because you don't even, don't have a bathroom over there yet. The bathroom that's downstairs is the problem is well we've had a couple of issues. Oh. The, the, there's a lot of electrical equipment stored oh. down there and it's it's kind of hazardous with with the electricians down there and mm -hmm. all the pipes. So it made a lot more sense not to... It's, it's not the it. safest place for the liability of the town to allow the public to use. I think your follow-up question is, when will the new bathroom <laughs> be available to library patrons? Either that or they're going to cookies are going to come or, out of their budget. Yeah. Or yeah. should they be... <laughs> or bring should more cookies. The cookies don't matter. The cookies that are in the parking lot. So anyway, sorry. Aren't right. they closer? Yeah. Right. They can come across the street. The porta potties are right there in the parking lot. Anyway, let's let Daphne. Daphne's here to give us a report on the project. So the construction at this point, um, we've, we've separated it into two phases because of the funding issues. Um, phase one, which is mostly the exterior and the rough, rough work on the interior, is, will be done by probably the first week of October. We still, what we have left on the exterior is the copper on the gables and the copper ends on the gables and paving of the parking lot. And then pretty much the whole exterior will be tight. We're meeting with an on-site meeting next week to go through a punch list. I mean, all the work is completed. Um, the sprinkler system's done. The rough electrical, the HVAC on the interior. What we have left is mostly finishing sheet rock, floors, walls, um, stairways, etc. The elevator is almost complete. Um, been a lot of drama about um, how you how many bones we need for fire alarms and elevators and all of that because we've lost our grandfathered in status. So the sprinkler system has had to extend into the old building as well. Uh -oh. um, so all of that had to be covered. We have a separate grant from a donor, um, Cobbs and Sherry Joyce, who's been handling that. From She's in Massachusetts, made a, a $75,000 donation to the landscaping on the end. Wow. And so we're hand, and that's specifically for the landscaping. So we're, to save the town from more paperwork, we're handling it through the Friends of the Jew Vine. So, <laughs> Thank you. So we're, so um, Gene Gravel is doing that, the hardscaping part, and is building, he's just about to start building a patio in front of the old building. And then we've got, in the spring, we'll be doing plantings of trees, etc. So it's nice that that can go ahead and we can do that. We're expecting funding that's going to um, allow us to finish up the interior. And that's yeah. from the Vermont Department of Libraries. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's no. There's no definitive word on that. And that's the one that's been hanging out there for like a year or roughly? No, probably more like three. Three years. Well, the, the money that we, the grant closed in March. The grant applications closed last in March. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they haven't made any awards yet. Applications were due in March and they haven't made awards. When the applications were sent in, the word was they would be announcing late spring, early June. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it's a different planet altogether. Yeah. So, um, but we're, we're so how much money's been spent today over there? Uh, two point two million. I what I don't remember what the total contract was for REAC, but the balance to finish is nine seventy one. So whatever that is. Difference, and then oh, there was obviously other soft costs, but 
And the grant from the state of Vermont that we applied for is for $725,000. And when we get that, then the reason we're closing things, shutting things down, and they've really, it's really screwed us up because we have to shut the whole project down um, because general conditions cost, I think, um, $850 a day just to have the construction going. Um, so it makes no sense with whatever funds we have left to just try and do the sheetrock and to pay general conditions at the same time. It also makes no sense to send out for bid for sheetrock without all the rest, because they need to time it. REARC will be doing all. The same company will be contracting that. So it's much more efficient for them to line up all those subcontractors so they can time it all so it all works. So that's <coughs> where we are. Question? I have, a, I have a question about the building itself. Yes. How's that flat roof working out with all the other pitched roofs draining onto it? No, they they went back and they raised it a little bit. They installed scuppers so they can send the water out. They installed some a massive drain by the new entrance. I think it was an 18-inch pipe so that it came out, trying to get the water away from the building. Um, we also have the GFI plug up there, so if needs be, we can put some heat up there in the winter if things get a little dicey. But it, we've been reassured that it should be okay. And have a year warranty? On the roof? On the building. <laughs> well, it'll be There's a lot of steel. It'll be out of warranty about, for its biggest. Are you worried about the collapsing? Because there's a heck of a lot of steel under that. Right. No, it just it just seemed like an interesting design to have so many pitched roofs coming down on a on a little bit of flat roof that looks like it will hold water and ice and snow. I was just curious how it was working. There's a, well, there's a drain in the center of it. Yeah. And it drains through the building. Okay. So it it was a tough design situation because yeah. how do you add an addition onto a pitched roof? Ah. How do you do that? And that's no, what, you don't. <laughs> that's the answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, yeah. Uh, anyway. Okay. I didn't mean to. Yeah. I, I just looking at it, I just wondered. So that's great that there's a huge drain in it. There is. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's a drain. I mean, I. The other issue was the the when we discovered the water that was running underneath. Um, that whole section had to be raised up. So then. It, Oh, right. Yeah, it ain't been an easy one, that's for sure. Yeah. No, it hasn't. But it's getting there, and it looks fantastic inside, and people are so excited. From what Diana said, people are just really excited about it. Well, and thank there you. will be many bathrooms. <laughs> and it's accessible. It's going to be upstairs, downstairs, take a pick. All right. Well, thank you for your perseverance. Yeah. And thank you for coming to give us an update. And Appreciate with the it. landscaping thing, when you start talking about trees in the spring, remember that there's a adopt a tree program. We're already, Diane already is. On okay. And the applications are due by December 31st. What's, what applications are due by December 31st. We're, we're consulting with many people who have much greener homes than me. <laughs> well, that will that will all happen through the application as well, because we're working with the, you know, with Jeff, the town arborist, and the <clears throat> conservation commission. So that all happens later. So just the application. Okay. Yeah. So we don't have to nail down the species. No. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good to know. No. Okay. Trees is trees. Great. Thank you. All right. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you both. Thanks. Next is uh, item four, follow-up discussion on LVRT collect connector loop recommendations and South Main Street by plane discussed at last meeting. Um, I have some information. Uh, Kristen did a pretty comprehensive study 
uh, on, South Main on Street. South Main Street. That was really great. I yeah. really enjoyed looking at that. Um, I think it's helpful. It was. I think that the planning of a sidewalk on South Main Street yeah. is necessary yeah. to incorporate stormwater control and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, as far as pricing goes, um, we haven't gotten back numbers, but we were pricing for green sidewalk for paint. Okay, pricing for paint. Okay, so you um, have feelers out. So pricing we back. have there's the green paint, the green bike path, yeah. the bike paint is typically for bike lanes. Yeah, um, it gets slippery, um, and then there's the MMA. It's the white hash marks. Yep. Um, I have a picture in the email, um, and that is recommended, um, but it's more expensive. So I'm getting a price per foot on the green and a price per foot on the MMA. I don't know what the MMA stands for. It's just raised. Yeah, it's raised a little bit and then reflective, probably. Yeah. So, um, those kind of stuff. You so, reading add, that right? recommendations that, of the fire marshal, that kind of sounded like that that recommendation was to get some paint down there was more of an educational tool to, to start with to make everyone understand that there is a sidewalk there, mm -hmm. not necessarily a, a fix-all. So I would go with the, what the cheapest one is what my point is. Because the green, they said, would be slippery. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it'll wear off when we plow it. <laughs> with the wing. And then, but I'm, I'm just thinking, Maybe I read the report wrong, but that recommendation of getting something painted sounded to me like it, that was a step in educating the everyone mm -hmm. that they shouldn't be parking there. So it'd be great to do it as inexpensive as we could, I would think. What if we uh, make a hybrid green stripe on our own, or a white stripe, the same pattern with regular paint, or just check the options, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, we might be, they can paint stripes as easy as they, if it's green stripe or a white stripe or with, green with cheap paint. Typically, isn't that a ribbon of green? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I'm just thinking that the, it sounded to me like the purpose of getting something down there in the near future was for education more than anything else. Because you're going to. It's a visual cue that this is a. This is not a parking spot, right? right. It's not a walk. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So, I, my only point is, it'd be great to be able to do that. Is not not sink a whole lot of money into it. It's not because what we really need is a sidewalk, and right. we really need some stormwater drainage through there. Well, you got to remember, our eight-inch water main runs right up through there, and right in the middle of the sidewalk that you guys talk about. Is that? I mean, we have don't we have water and sewer lines that run willy willy nilly all over the village? No. Not now. So Here and there, they are separated by 10 feet. So what are you saying, we can't? Well, if you're talking about doing that. drainage structure and everything else down through there, oh, you yeah. gotta remember, all that water main well, is yeah. underneath it. Yeah, wait. I think we would, our, right. they were talking our about stormwater water. system is in place, it's just getting the water to right. go. They were talking about an isolated spot yeah. that needed attention, that's right. what they talked about in the study. Yeah. Didn't read the study? Never sure. seen it. So, Okay, so you're saying any construction is going to have to work around the existing water, or are you saying what's the date of that? What? I mean, it's brand new. It was okay. done in uh, yeah, probably what ten years ago or so. Okay. Yeah. South Main. Sidewalks with, the, with the whole South Main Street project. project. Yes, with this with the brand new sidewalk that came yeah. up from uh, Bond Auto yeah. all the way up to the church. Yeah. That was part of it because the water main runs right underneath the sidewalk and it continues all the yeah. way up through until you get down to oh god i think it's down well down by danny's then it finally crosses the road towards macbell and then it cuts back down but if it but having that under the sidewalk is not a problem no. it's not a problem okay. no it just he started it talking storm drainage. water yeah so yeah. it's like okay you can start digging that up you got to remember the water mains there yeah so yeah we would use existing storm water and just make sure the so where are we at 
So it sounds like and you're still waiting to get pricing. But this is South Main, so I want to go over to the North Main, to the bike lane. <laughs> so wait, just to sum up, so South Main, you're still waiting to get pricing because we need that. Getting an idea of the cost of the project. Yep. And ultimately, we need to do, we need to design and build the sidewalk and storm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, uh, so now pivoting to North Main Street, and if you can help me here, um, we the, there was a new law that was passed <coughs> requiring four feet uh, of a buffer between the bike lane and the shoulder of the roadway and and a lane of travel. So in order to put, I know we have to do we, there, four feet. A car needs to give a so, bike four feet. Right. Yeah. So to be clear, right I don't believe the law says anything about, and I don't know this, but from what I know, yeah. doesn't say anything about a bike lane needing to be four feet. No, just bikers. Bikers. A biker and a car need they, to be four feet apart. The bike lane they consider five feet. So if we were to do a, if we were to delineate a bike lane on North Main Street, we would have to remove several of the parking spaces in front of the Legion. Basically all of them. And across the North Main Street Bridge to do a bike lane. Because we'd have to shift the center line over. Right. No, your travel portion of your lane is 10 feet wide. Yeah. Your shoulders are two feet wide yeah. afterwards. And then you can have your bike lane from that over. And there are places on North Main Street where the, there is no shoulder. It goes ten feet to parking spot. So we would have so yeah. So we we have to figure that out. Um, I mean, you could. I don't know if there's room to move the center line and maintain two lanes of travel. Um, there needs to be a center line for because it's a class two highway. Um, unless there's a traffic study done, and I know B Trans is just there doing a study. So, uh, so what's stopping us from putting the little, what do they call those things? The sharrow. The sharrows on just in both lanes out here. It's called well, it What we did do in the, the class one paving project is they did a share the, share the road signs with a bike um, symbol. A symbol mm -hmm. with an arrow mm -hmm. in, the, in the lane every, I don't know, they didn't last very long. That got, was the thing that they used the wrong type of paint or something on. Yeah, so they, they use the wrong type of paint on, on most of the everything. stuff. Yeah, except for the parking spots. Mm -hmm. um, well, everything's water-based paint. So. Yeah. So, and then that also the the funding for that is tied into <coughs> the USDA grant for the bridge. Mm -hmm. So, and part of the reason that that concept for the bike loop. <sighs> including the bridge worked is because you didn't right. have to send the bike traffic down by the legion and the bridge you yeah. could turn right and go across cross street and down mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. daniels so like when we get to that point and we have the bridge that still works right we probably have the width to do it through here like by this building in the library and then send people right right and the bike lane may have to be on north main street might have to be going up the hill other side to create so we don't lose those parking spots so there's there's got to be some shifting we haven't always had the parking spots on the bridge right but they are getting but the ones heavily used yeah all parking yeah. spots are getting heavily used well yeah because there's no parking behind the hard again and there's <coughs> spaces that are not there so okay so it's just it's it's food for thought it's information Yep. Information is good. Yep. Um, putting the costs associated with this and then finding the money to do it. Is Which, all, is and, all. and the other thing we, I think we wanted from that study was the crosswalks around this four-way intersection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's still on your list of yeah. getting great, getting, yeah. okay. So it sounds to me like one thing we could do if we had budget without disrupting anything would be those sharrows on the pavement up and down North Main Street. Mm -hmm. You just want to say sharrows again? I like that word. It's like mm -hmm. a, like a arrow. Which one? Sharrows. Just, just the... Arrow and the bike. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the bike and the arrow. Simple enough. Is that what that is? Yeah. That's what it is. Sharrow. Okay. Share the road. It's a thing. Arrow. We read it last time in our... Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what the... I thought it was an actual lane. So it's just no. the symbol. Yeah. Just, just say it. yeah, just say it. Yeah, like just saying, share the yeah. It's just like hey, there's gonna be yeah. 
Excuse me. So the crossbox. Yeah. Can you talk no. about the crossbox? You're going to have to order, order them. Uh, a template? Yeah. But, but we can. We can. Templates exist. Yeah. We could oh, yeah. Okay. You just need to order them. We just don't. That's good because that's going to be an annual thing, right? Like it's going to be like all the other paints. Just like the crosswalks. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. going to wear. Cheap paint twice um, a year. So. That the cro Well, we should talk about the crosswalks. Okay. The fact that we can't just paint crosswalks no, out here. They have to be ADA compliance. The two spaces that would be. Uh, would be a considerable um, upgrade that we'd have to do is on the corner by HED and on the corner by the library to make ADA compliant approaches. So because we have one here, we don't really have one in front of our building, so there'd be three new approaches. And then there's no sidewalk, there's no ADA sidewalk in front of the light department. That can be redone, of course, but um, Where's our water main? Close to that sidewalk? No, we're on we're on the road a little bit. Okay. So there's there's that 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 right there. That's a good project to to be able to refurbish this intersection. I think. Mm -hmm. So we definitely can. I mean, it's going to cost some money to order like all the like to redo the sidewalks and all that. It's just I yeah. guess the point is like we can't just go paint crosswalks there right so, now like legally. <laughs> That's all. Just, it we just seems a little do silly some to additional me I, I agree that it's not it, it's not accessible to everyone. Yeah. On the other hand, um, people are crossing at this intersection all the time because we have the library, we have Agreed. the light department, yes. we have this building, and we have the park. Yep. And there's lots of foot traffic, and it seems to me like it would be a lot safer if we had crosswalks that directed people to be in a certain area and also alert drivers that they're my pedestrians. And it seems a shame that we're not allowed to do that because our- You're allowed to do it. Yeah, it's just gonna cost you money. You have to be ADA compliance. Any but, new constructions or anything like that, you have to be ADA compliance. So, but is painting lines new construction? Yes, because where's it going to? A handicapped person cannot get from one side to the other. So, if, so yeah, if we painted no, a crosswalk it. from here, that dead ends into that, that, that crosswalk, and they can't get up onto it, I know they get hit. So, this all right, it's just to let them do. Yeah, it. we just have exactly. We remove, as we remove I also wonder about the other about other other. on on your point of people crossing the road. It's very busy there. There's lots of kids running around. We have people crossing the road on Route Two in Danville by Larrabee's. Yeah. We have people crossing the road down by the yellow barn. Yeah. Or down by the sewer plant road mm -hmm. with no crosswalk. Yeah. And then we have people crossing here and over there without crosswalks. We have people crossing the road at the right. three way so, stop at the So if we so You're right. Why I mean they do it all why the time. Is it different? Why is it yeah, why yeah. aren't they putting I've often wondered why why isn't there some sort of a delineation in the roadway? When it's, people cross at the LVRT, and I think, I think it's, it's a trail. the same. It's not that cross. Yeah. yeah. It's not the same. But though. they're still pedestrians. Yeah. But so I just wonder. It's a question that's right. That's and they didn't. Yeah. yeah. They intentionally didn't do any. Right. Any so, like West Danville last year, they had a crosswalk. This year, they didn't paint it because the trail doesn't The one on two? Yeah. Where the double lane is? By Larrabee's. Larrabee's, either one of them. There's they no didn't crosswalk. have a crosswalk ever. They did right at Joe's Pond. Oh yeah, at Joe's Pond. Pond. They, they had a crosswalk yes. last year, and they didn't repaint it this year. Yeah, because I just sat right there and watched them. Yeah, because they two down by Joe, one. Yeah, on either side of the I intersection. Remember that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, and it's, it's but you have fifty mile an hour traffic, and you can't have people stop it. It's they don't not have people absolutely. do not have a right away. In the village, you have a twenty five mile an hour speed on it because pedestrian travel is encouraged from sidewalk to sidewalk. So it's a totally different thing. Um, so do you know why they wouldn't put a crosswalk here? On the rail trail? Yeah. yeah. Because the rail trail doesn't get crosswalks. It's not they don't have the right of way. A crosswalk is a pedestrian crosswalk. Oh, right, you can't even, you don't ride your bike across yeah. a, a yeah. crosswalk. You right. get off and walk your bike. Yeah. It's a pedestrian crossing. Yeah. That's a rail trail crossing. Got it. There's horses. Not there's no right of way there. You can, if you step out of the rail trail into the road and you get run over, then Got it. you get run over. That happens as a pedestrian too. It's just who's at fault. 
Right, but you don't want to, you can't hit people. <laughs> but what, what I'm saying is it's not, it's different. I know, a, a, I, cro I, a pedestrian I, cross rock, the pedestrian has the right of way. Right, yes. You have to stop if someone's in a crosswalk. It's the law. The rail trail, that traveler doesn't have the right of it's way. Not a that traveler has a stop May sign. not be a pedestrian. Yes, yeah, that traveler has a stop sign. Stop. They have a stop sign and look both ways, you're on your own. Yeah. It's old school. Okay. So, all right. Fair <laughs> sure enough. More information. Great. So no, no crosswalks painted out here because no until way. we do a, until we see fit to. But I would argue that of all, yes, that's a nice discreet project. But of all the areas that we have that are less than ideal mm -hmm. for pedestrians, that mm -hmm. maybe isn't the most important one. This here, yeah. Um, I think South Main Street's a little more important. A, a working or appropriately placed stop sign at that intersection. No, right. we do not. Where's that? Right here by the library. That thing that's on like we a... We have the light post. Telephone pole. Telephone pole. It's on telephone that's pole. all the way back. That it's huh? a car that's length that's back. back. Right. That's not, that's not legal. That's not a painting. Okay. Okay. I think it's a good... I'm so, just saying. Okay. It wouldn't right. hold up Let's go. Item seven. Stop sign. Nope. nope. I'm going to reel this back in. We're going to yeah. we're going to summarize that yeah. you're still getting um, you're still getting estimates figuring out the painting thing and you're going to also figure out like what it would it cost to do some sharrows over here. Yeah. And, and the the part portion of the funding for the connector loop yeah. to yeah. cover the sharrows when we do the project. When we do it. That's true. So we could just wait <coughs> to do it when we do the project. Is that what you're saying? Well, well start yeah. the project There's do it. You got to do the whole project. You can't get it. You have to get a notice to proceed. Yeah. And so you can't do that until we're ready to proceed. But we could wait and do it then. It's fine with me. I don't know. Oh, because the funding's know. in the bridge. Yeah. Yeah, it's tied up in one big project. Yep. Yeah. So okay. it should be tied for a while. All right. Thank you for all the updates. I appreciate the follow up and really appreciate Kristen's thing, especially with the pictures of North Main or South Main Street as it used to be with that sidewalk that Danny mentioned last time. Um, item, f where are we, six? Five. 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 Oh, oh. Five, follow up on discussion of a project manager position discussed at the last meeting. You put together a rough estimate on yeah. cost. Um, and I think we're really just gonna talk about this in budget season, but yeah. um, Kaylee had asked to discuss it at the next meeting and I sort of just did up, you know, realistically what it's gonna cost, yep. which is about $100,000. Right, because we I thought everybody and was benefits. supposed to come back. Salary and that. benefits. I mean, we're talking somebody that has experience Project right. management, not so we've like an entry project level. Manager? Um, what was that? So we've decided project manager. Well, let's work. No, no. I don't think it's been like that's that's what we said our discussion. need was, but it's it's discussion. But even whether that per, whether you change that to manager though. <laughs> you got what it. did you call it then? Public works director, okay. which is a whole I different. I thought yeah. we were all supposed to. Call do research. I mean, it's all in the yeah. job description, right? Yeah. No, no, one did that. Name. no one did that except for me. I poked around a little. Kaylee did too. Mm -hmm. She emailed. Um, Project man. No, no, that's just not necessarily. So when we had this discussion last time, yeah, that's just what, it doesn't have that to be. That's table, what I did. What, I mean, so what do you sample need? employee don't don't get budget. Don't on the position yet. They said we need project management. It's, it's based on the job description, not the title. Like, you can call it whatever you want. It's mm -hmm. one of their responsibilities. That would be creating another position, the cost of creating another position at that level of workload. And experience. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of tech, not, unless you have stuff to report, there's not a lot. I'm just showing you this is probably what it would cost to have a new position. Right. I mean, until we're so ready to kind of just whether move we're going to put that into the budget or not, then right. Yeah. You can't even keep the newspaper here. <laughs> <laughs> we're out on the crowd. In, we are know, out on the crowd. We need to argue more. Oh my god. Um, yeah, it's, it's boring. <laughs> right? So we need some controversy. Right. I, budget season. No, I'm really wondering. I do feel that that there's a need for staff augmentation. I agree just glancing at, at Casey's rough like 
if you pay someone and you pay their health insurance and you pay them some benefits, then it's going to cost hundred thousand dollars because that's just the way it is. Yeah. yeah, I agree with that. And so that's that's actually a substantial amount to add to the budget because that would be above and beyond everything else that just goes up with inflation. Yeah. So as we think about, I think we have two things we need to think about heading into budget season. What really would be the role and responsibility of a new position. I think the other thing we should think about is, are there funding sources that would help if would help a town trying to aug do staff augmentation in a time of disaster recovery to, to help um, our staff be able to, to complete projects you and know, get the, keep the town rolling. BCF like we talked about, like yeah. working with them on funding. Like, I just wonder if we could um, do it over a course of three years or something right. like that, like where they could like provide. Like, for three years. Like a recovery yeah. position. Like where yeah. they could give us X amount for three years, which would then reduce the It softens out. the blow. Yeah. But um, anyway, that's, that's all. Um, so really just wanted to paint a picture of- Offering up another grant. <laughs> so it does seem like, to me, it would, it would be much more palatable to roll that into budget discussions if we had yeah. some source of funding that would offset part of it anyway for several years. I know nobody's going to give us a grant to fund a position forever, right. but there are sometimes funding opportunities for um, building capacity. Well, they fund positions for officers. For a limited right. time, just like right. that, right? Yeah, and that's the sort of thing that, that maybe we could find. Yeah, and I would want concrete roles and responsibilities. Right. Or, yes, it would have to be a requirement. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, okay. So thank you, mm -hmm. and we should keep good discussion. Uh, we, we are where actually we don't. So we should try, I think, by our second meeting in October to, to refine this a little bit ahead of budgeting. Like, what are the key responsibilities and what are some possible funding sources? Because by November, we're going to really be looking at budget a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move us on item six, um, KC, the business manager, to present the proposed FY25 water and sewer rates. Um, and these were after verifying, um, like basically going back and verifying all the numbers from last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, so we'll look at water first. Yep. Yeah. Um, our expense budget that we set um, in June was the 317879 so that's what we need to raise, exactly that, to break even with the system. Um, so basically um, we were able to kind of look at where our usage was. I can tell you in fiscal year 24 we came in significantly below budget on our usage. Um, did have some water leaks and stuff that were fixed um, on a couple accounts, which did affect something, but probably around thirty thousand dollars short, and that was just in water. I think sewer was about forty-five thousand dollars short in usage. Um, so I mean, people are obviously conserving. Um, uh, so with water, looking at um, pretty nominal base increases. Um, Residents would be $12 a year, so $3 a quarter. Um, and then the usage rate going from 0 0.0085 to 0 0.0115. So um, that's what we're thinking. And, and these, do the unit, oh, okay, go ahead. No, yeah. That's what I was going to ask. What were you going to say about units? The units you just circled, are those roughly yes. aligned with <coughs> actuals from last mm -hmm. year? Yes. <coughs> yep. So um, that's what it's going to take to break even, we think. Um, and so the, the bulk of the increase is really on the usage again. Great. Driving. That's where I <laughs> that's want what, it. That's, 
Um, so. Well, it, it leads so us towards a pay per use kind of thing. If I'm using 8,000 gallons a year or a quarter, it costs me. 58.50 a quarter. No, I'm looking at the difference between if I use 8,000 gallons quarterly and unmetered. Oh, an additional? Yeah. So. Yep. If your overage is eight, so you use your basic. No. What I'm saying is, is I'm using eight thousand unmetered. Oh, unmetered. You're using yeah. eight thousand metered. Yeah, you pay more. Yeah. And that is, I was just going to bring this up too. Like this, it basically become becomes unfair to those who where we haven't installed a meter. So we need to get on that. And this has been a topic that well, comes I up. I think I've heard that before. It's been years. Yeah. Do we have any update on that process? I know that's not part of the budget discussion, but since we're here. I know Kenny ordered 10 meter pits. I don't know if they've come, if they've showed up yet. Ooh. And when they do show up, what's the plan for getting them installed? Are we hiring that out? Or the mm -hmm. Tom's crew doing it? No, we would hire that out. All right. Doesn't that Styles company like couldn't don't they sell them and install them or subcontract for installing them? Yeah, they they you could probably get a company to do the whole shebang. Could you put what seventy five thousand away? There is a there's for there's install. Some, yeah. Well, and there's more than that in water capital, like yeah. for new meters and stuff. Overall, do you want to? Put that on a, as a item for a October meeting, either October meeting, either one. Do um, <clears throat> a plan for. I'd love to put some dates around, like even if, if we whatever it is we think if we think we can do ten this year and how many can we do next? Like how fast can we mm -hmm. get those down? Because it it really does become. What year did we do the meters? Two thousand fifteen. Oh, I was going to say it's been five years. It's been nine. nine. Going on How many unmetered accounts do we have? 79. 79. Oh, right. Same 79 we had in 2015. Yeah. No. No, they're I'll argue with that one. Yeah. Different one? Different no. 79? Yeah. No. Why we were we way up people? around 90 or so. Well, there, there I'm was, not, there was a little bit of progress in the early <clears> years. But we do need to make a plan on that. All right, but otherwise, I um, this, this is one of those yeah. those projects that it has been put aside at least since I've been here. Yeah, I'll take, before I'll take full responsibility since before. for the last two years. Yeah, um, our summers have been are, have been hijacked. Yeah, and it's catching up to my. Um, you know the list of of routine stuff and capital improvements that we need to make. It's 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 being you know it, that list is growing, and it makes it look like we're not able to to handle just the basic stuff. It's frustrating. Do I want to get the water meters in? Absolutely. Yeah. I totally get to put a water meter in. Hmm? How much is it to put a water meter in? I have. The thing I would say. A couple hours with a digger, a couple hours with a plumber. Um, what do they cost to each? Two thousand. An easement. Thousand? Some legal work that, with an easement to be able to do the work. Two thousand a piece. That might be covered under the water ordinance. For the thing, two thousand a piece. A couple thousand, I think, yeah. a piece. But I think what what Opie's saying is, is not the money so much as yeah. it's the time. You got every one of those things is a little project. You and have then, to line it up. You have to get the equipment there. You have to get yeah, the right, cars. Right, you right. have to, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then who's going to deal with the, who's going to interact between the landowner, the, the resident, and the crew, if you hire a crew, or you're going to hire somebody to deal with? I know the answer. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. You I'd, know the answer. I'd love to be able to. Public works director. Yeah, it's true. Project yeah. manager. People. It's true. No. <laughs> Just kidding, Danny. Public works director, whatever you want. <laughs> no doubt it's an issue that comes up, for me, it has come up the last three years mm -hmm. that we need to put meter pits in. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. 
This is the reality of the conditions on the ground. Sure. Yeah. Damn, what? Twice? Yeah, the list of projects downstairs on the board that need to get out for RFPs and stuff, it's on there. It's been on there, but right. it's... Right. We get it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. It's frustrating. It's not a blame. We understand. You, you can blame. I know. In an effort to try to move the ball forward, that's all. <laughs> I'm not complaining because I'm dissatisfied with I what you're doing. I'm dissatisfied. Might be a practical application for that uh, equity grant. Oh. Anyway, there was a, a, a ten thousand. Yeah, there's a ten thousand dollar equity grant, and that can be used to put in meters. But anyway. now, we always went to the the, the water rates. Right. With the, with the right. Yeah. That's a practical application of it. Let's yeah. get back to it. Yeah. Okay. No, I agree. Sweet. So I like. I do. I know. I know, you, Casey. That you've. I hear you when you're like. We put more onto the, the overage amounts, and then the overage amounts goes down, and they're more of a variable thing that we do quantity. But I do think it's important to move <coughs> towards a pay per use kind of thing, and. I think it's good to put more on the average. Yeah, it's just the thing is, is like the cost of running the system doesn't seem to be getting like it just keeps going up, 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 and then people conserve, and then we yeah, don't right. we don't meet our revenue expectations, yeah. and then so all waste is that way. <laughs> Down, the landfills are the like, same way, right? Yeah. You know, you you charge for tipping fees, but yet you're trying to get everybody to recycle, so your tipping fees go down. Mm -hmm. The cost of building a landfill goes up. Mm -hmm. Solid waste is the same thing. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't have a, a you know a, 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 your budget can't be driven by things you're trying to stop. <laughs> right. You know what right. I'm saying? So you're trying to use less. Our expenses and, and went up. Yeah. 30, almost $33,000 year over yeah. year. And it's process chemicals. It's it's what we need to operate the system. Um, and so anyway, um, what we're looking well, at. That, I mean, we need to just figure out that true base rate and that's gonna, gonna have to go up accordingly. It does in both of these. So, right, that's what I'm saying. As yeah. long as that, as long as we're, that's where it's gotta be. So, we just can't rely on the overages for that. Right. No, but we, we do, so it's a combination, right? So, so com yeah, the so base, residential right? is going to go up $60 a year, $15 a quarter. If you stay at your 8000 that's that's, that's it. it, $15 a quarter, and then you'll have the $3 a quarter on water. So it's $18 a quarter for somebody who has like a typical, typical residential who doesn't go over and has water and sewer. They're looking at $18 more a quarter, I guess, if you look at that. In the grand scheme of things, it's just, yeah. Six dollars a month, that's manageable. So, yeah. Um, but here, the jump is a little more drastic than it was on water, and that's simply because this is a much more costly system to run. And so... Um, so, for every gallon a resident uses over 8,000, yeah. it costs them um, 0.018. 1.8 cents. 1.8 yeah. cents mm -hmm. per gallon. About two pennies. Per gallon. Yeah. So, like so, so they've got to use it. So how many gallons do they get to use for the, Never mind. I don't even want to know. So. <laughs> so they get to use a shit ton more for the same money as me. Who? Yeah. What? what the unmetered? Yeah, the, yeah, meter the unmetered. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure where the unmetered number gets so much higher. That means they'd have to use ten, I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands of gallons more to get up to 300. I mean, that is why the unmetered rate is a little bit higher because we don't know what they're using. They could be using 20,000 a month. They spend, it's probably not yeah, likely. Well, most but of all of the unmetered are trailers, so they're not. They're all, every, yeah, every single one so of them. So they're not using high volumes. But let's just fix it by getting pits in the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. My point is the overage is cheap. Mm -hmm. The overage is cheap, cheap. That's cheap, cheap. 1.8 cents a gallon. Yeah. I mean, that's. I that's mean, cheap. we could go higher and do less of a basing. Well, I, I don't I mean, know if it's right or wrong. I mean, I know yeah. we put a lot of effort into getting these things <clears> set up, so I don't want to derail it, yeah. but you think about it. Um, so that's 100 gallons for a dollar. Nope. 
Yeah, dollar eighty. Dollar eighty. Yeah. Hundred dollars for dollar eighty. Yeah, it's cheap. It's cheap. How, how many times is your sewer saver? How many gallons in your sewer saver toilet? Three gallons. Three and a half. I think it's three and a half. When you flush, so that's costing you. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Pennies. Three three cents. <laughs> I mean, three or three or more yeah. not five cents. So I think. <clears throat> I mean, I have the Excel spreadsheet. We could play around with it right, right here and right now. If don't you somebody do to. that? Yeah. I mean, that which we did, and that's what we came up with. Yeah. Is the, yeah but I'm saying, but if you wanted to change that to two cents a gallon, yeah. we could, and then see how we could well, get the no, basic. The, the goal of the rates is to be equitable. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, it, it, it seems like a reasonable increase in the rate, no? Well, I know, but yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, Danny, I'm learning it. So yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not picking on you, but I I'm defer. just saying that the, the the issue I have, I guess, can, is all resolved by meters. Everybody beyond the meter, sure. which was the yeah. goal when we put yeah. the meters in. For yeah. sure. The number one goal yeah. was to get everybody on a level playing field. Right. I totally ten agree. years so, ago, we got they stop? eleven more in ten years. Okay. So I also think just. My view has been that we should lower the uh, and then more rate, the, the, the base and rate, and the base gallons, and yeah. shift more of it on to so that so that we can produce. Well, we did already go from ten thousand to eight thousand. So I know that was and the most I, I could get people to agree. Uh, I don't. <laughs> so is there any data? So is there data that tells us what the average residential? And household and higher users. users. We already have to cut back, so then we're going to... Yeah. It would have to be based off the law. It's there, but it, it, you'd have to... You'd have to I mean, this is not the time to do it. The committee, but next year, before we set the rates, I think we need to take the... Well, we run. say that every yeah. year, though, like, yeah. and... Well, so, around, we will. what happens yeah. is... We have these meetings the same time okay. every year. Maybe. We have a couple of select board members Sorry. participate and then the bills go out with the new notices and we get people coming in yeah. angry but nobody comes to the meetings for their input until they see the rate increase mm -hmm. um and we do it the same time every year it's always like the first well, I think our rates will be the same, but i think the structure so the money you know i don't know i think i, I think it's important to have the base rate be a hard a real number in what the average use of the the average residential. There's got to be an average use for residential, right? So if that's if it's three thousand I mean, gallons, if we it's going to be more. But let's yeah. just say it's three thousand gallons, then we're we need to really adjust our rate. If it's ten thousand gallons, then we need to adjust our rate. No, if it's 8, well, not gallons, our rate. You're saying the 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 cost of the uh, overages, right? And base well, cost. that or like the eight thousand, maybe if yeah. a lot of people are using less than that, then right. So the, we need to adjust the bait in the over. The, so the I'd base say there's the also there's an entirely different model that we see every time we get our electric bill, and that is you pay a really small base rate, which is like fifteen bucks, and then you pay for every kilowatt hour you use. We could have the same type of thing here, where you pay a connection fee and it's like twenty bucks. But you pay for every gallon you use. And we had all these discussions when we, we, we set these meters up. And we said at that time, we did not know that that was the perfect way to do it. It, it was partly because it was going to rock the boat pretty hard because everybody was used to just paying a certain rate. I mean, I think you could, you could sell that, but then you'd have to have everybody metered. We'd have to. Yeah, we, well, we're we going to have everybody metered. We're going to have everybody Coming back to are. that. Right, so first and foremost, that's. That's our goal this year. This isn't going to, none of what we're talking about tonight is going to change this. Right. But we need to get on it next year. Right, so that's. David? Get on the meters. Yep. Write it down. Yep. Hold, the, hold the feet next to the year, fire. Get on it. Next. Hold the select board's feet to the fire on this one. Next year, when we do, uh, <laughs> when we do the water and sewer budgets, we got to be, we got to really look at it. We do. We do really look at it every time. Right. The trouble is that we are we, uh, we well. It's not trouble. That we go through a whole process and we end up moving things just a little. But, uh, right. Which is okay. Yeah, we do that every year. So what do we year. what do we need to move out of this one? Uh, right. Exactly. I move that we approve. Uh, we I move that we approve the sewer and water rates for FY twenty five. As presented. As presented. Second. Uh, any more discussion? 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Good. Thank you very much, Casey and Tanya in absentia for verifying. And Tim. <laughs> Mostly Tim. Tim. Mostly Tim. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Casey and Tanya did everything. Um, yeah. They, All right. They did. I Next really up uh, is item seven. We have a, a new contract with our town manager that is here somewhere. Uh, a motion to, uh, do we move to approve the town manager's contract? I will is that how that works? Yeah. I will second that. Or to present the town manager with the contract? Move, I think we move to approve it and we sign yeah. it and then he can sign it. Okay. So you, you move to, move approve, to it. approve it. And this is a three year contract. Three year contract. Oh, three year sentence. And I second it. So, any discussion about the contract? It provides an annual increase for three years. It provides otherwise the same uh, compensation. Small stipend for his full rate. But that was and uh, the same some health insurance, insurance, et cetera, as other employees. 30 grand a year is what it costs for a family. Insurance for health insurance. Yeah, and it's been going up anywhere and from twelve to fifteen percent a year. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, employees and contribute too. Employees pay twenty percent. It's eighty twenty premium. Um, Which is a good deal. Yeah. No. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We have really good coverage. Don't get me wrong, but um, a family plan costs us over thirty thousand dollars. So that's mm -hmm. we could cut it by like forty thousand and get it by like eighty twenty. Yeah. Yeah, the total cost. Yeah. yeah, he's thinking total cost is closer to forty. No, that's um no because I I figure the premium plus the HRA the deductible oh. I am already figuring that so in they, that's in there. So, they so like it it, it, it can it can fluctuate. It could be less. It could that's yeah. worst case scenario because family, um if they the use all the deductible yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. then we pay the first yeah. like. But that's what you got to figure. So. Yes. Oh yeah. So Still spent. That's a slideshow yeah. though because that you're going back to her her guess on the additional. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, but this well, we have the mo we have a motion and second to approve the town manager contract. That's the motion on the table. So, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. You don't get aye. a vote. I was gonna say you don't get a vote. <laughs> uh, I decided to. Um, there is one typo on here. I'm not Elizabeth now. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's my bad. The print you're gonna, you're gonna print it. There we go. Um, I decided to bite the bullet and sign a three-year contract. It's amazing to try to get through this recovered. Thank you. Yeah. Shows my commitment. It does. <laughs> yeah. So I will say I'll, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Every time I drop in downstairs and I drop in just randomly, there's always something flood-related going on in that office. It's it's the world, though. Everywhere you go, it's that way nowadays, unfortunately. No, but it, it does take over, and it, it's and taken it, over everywhere, everybody, though. So my only point is no. But we came up with a concrete example of something that that we didn't want to push off. That's been pushed off. Yeah. Because there, we have all these other needs because of the flooding. <coughs> we literally had flooding in the basement two days ago. Oh yeah. yeah, when, the, when your plumber was drain. here. A slow drain. The, the, the slow drain was a little too slow. Yeah, whenever we have big groups up here, there was uh, a HED training. Yeah. The toilet up here gets used quite a bit yeah. and then it backs up. Mm, so, why? So we wear, we wear, wear rubber boots on those days. <laughs> yeah. Sign that. And we make sure. Just be putting it away. Um, I'll, I'll Okay, next thing is item eight, the Vermont Community Development Program grant for heartbeat plus time. We verified some VCDP <coughs> documentation, but this time this we are. Resolution for VCDP grant application authority. There we go, that's it. Are you making a motion to approve that? Thank you, Ben. And any seconds? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, so we can sign that. Any? Uh, Oops. Everybody sign the bottom. Yeah. Okay. And then I'll just just print your name on one side and sign the other. Uh, can. can can we? Print and sign. Yep. Any select board report? Yes. 
Wow, first out of the gate, Danny Hale. I attended the Woodbury oh. Rail Trail meeting. Oh. Um, so they they have interest in getting their committee back together. Um, I, I, of course, I've been involved forever in that situation. So they, I was actually late getting home from work, so they had a half hour or so ahead of me. Uh, they were talking about fixing some projects basically to get it done this year. They're applying for um, FEMA money that they're quite certain they're going to get because they've got all of their FEMA money that they've asked for in Woodbury already. The whole town? Checks, yep. Huh. Um, so I'm not, <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. I think they just had road projects and some bridges. I have no idea. But they were quite confident they're going to get feeding them when they fix the rail trail on, on the Woodbury side, which I hope they do. Uh, but they're go it's going to be astronomically expensive because it wasn't built to be a rail trail. But anyways, besides that, um, I brought to their attention that it, the committee used, is the Hardwick Woodbury Rail Trail yeah. Committee yeah. with mirroring boards that serve together. Um, so I'm going to, we need to get the Hardwick side back together. I think October 9th there, 7th, something October. They're going to have their next meeting. I plan on contacting the, the ATV club. The ATVs will be the same, it's the same club, so same guy. They, we don't need two guys from the same club. Snowmobile, I got to contact the snow, Snowmobile club. Um, we should get someone to represent bike interest and pedestrian interest. Um, and I'm just like board interest. So I was going to talk to you about the other trail stuff, but I, we got to scrounge up a couple more people to serve on that committee. Um, Somebody from the Conservation Commission? No. Rec committee? No. Well, uh, the, so the rec, yeah, it, it's, it, it's it based, the plan is based on um, interested parties. You know, the uses, if you, every use gets a representative. That's how it's set up. So it could be someone from the rec committee, but I think, you know, I don't. Uh, the rec committee and the trails committee, the LBRT, there probably should be somebody from the LBRT committee because they don't. The LBRT the committee is, you know, hopefully. It's, it's. Break it up. Well, I think it, once we get the kiosks up and stuff, I don't think that that group is necessarily like an ongoing Committee. Well, there's going to be, to be someone. Taken someone's going to have to take on the responsibility of the LVRT yeah. in the town. And I that mean, committee's belief is that somehow the rec committee needs to be stepped up. So into the rec that committee, role. the Harder Trails committee, and the LVRT committee should all be brought into this room, slide the big door shut, and say, "Kids, this is what's going to happen." I think we need to seriously look at how we fund our trails and our rec committee and it all needs to be put into a, you know something different than what it is i mean i'm being asked like, well I'm, I'm not gonna i'm gonna say that you were right that the b trans is starting to ask us to do projects on the lbrt oh absolutely absolutely because they can't handle so it. you know and here again i hate to make the shameless plug but a public works director would be a great person to take mm -hmm. care of all this um, but for now, Obi, you. I mean, for example, today the Sons of the American Legion want to do a, a clean out of the park um, above the bell, and so the bikers can view the park, yeah. and, you know, and see it. And, and that's where the Daughters of the American Revolution want to put their garden. Um, it's in the V Trans right away. I don't think we're going to have any issues putting it in there, but somebody has to coordinate with V Trans yeah. to do the work. And it's not going to be the sun. <coughs> so the there's board. also the smaller kiosk that goes in right. there. Right. And I mean, the, the Harder Trails thing is, is great. There. We yeah. don't want to lose it. But if it, so oh, we're spending right. town money in three different places. I just think we need, to, we need to figure out that. I think one committee for all the trails and rec would be more manageable from a standpoint of the town. Mm -hmm. um, but for this particular exercise, I need I need a biker and a hiker. Um, that's that's what it's called out specifically in the in the existing plan. So the committee, my suggestion was for the committee to first thing they need 
they were they they started right off shooting for the stars, and I kind of brought them back to where you know I I hate. I've done this before. You need to stand your committee up before you start taking actions of the committee. You know, it's it's not you got to have the foundation of the committee before you start taking actions, seeking grants, administering grants, and so on. So, um, Can, I, I almost called you the other day because I went up Carry Road and I, all of a sudden it struck me that that trail, the entrance has shifted down on Carry Road, like lower and lower. Yep. over the years and I believe it currently goes through the property we're in the process of selling we just that. sold yes and so what's the how does that either get preserved it's going to have to be I mean that's when the, we need to get to the rail trail committee back together that's there's an issue there's a file huh there's a file well she couldn't find it but I know the file because I lived the file and I know yeah. the situation but that doesn't mean that there's been legal, we've legal beagled that to death. I know. Um, I, I have a vague recollection of the, the whole right. situation. So there. currently the, 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 the rail trail comes right out through. It goes straight through. Through his yep. driveway. And goes right across the road and through some other through places. Through some other places and right around to the, to the KFC. Uh, KFC. Yeah. And, you know, part of the Lamar Valley Rail Trail gig is to come all over way out to that, to, to their end, to dead end at the KCL to what the Hard to Wood cool Rail Trail is. So well, think, all of that's going to have to be done with. You connect the wood, Hard to Wood Rail Trail all the way to the Elberry Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ideally. So, well, no, it's, it's a plan. They're, oh, it is? Yeah, I mean, it's been a plan for a while. It's on It's on paper, but oh, um, I guess I didn't know. we haven't executed it, and you know, because there's a lot of I thought that was People are going to have to move their houses, so well, <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, we, re we have small reroutes in those Well, so this trail. whole thing about following the rules but here but not following the rules there thing, I have a problem with. But anyway, all that's n down the road. We do need okay. to figure it out because we did sell. So we have an agreement with Alfred Willie on record to come down skirt his property. But to, on his property. But on his property, yeah. but we have to maintain a fence, yeah. um, and it's not 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 a good situation. We don't want to go back there. At this point, we're going to need to put it where it belongs, and he can move his driveway down on his land or something. But okay. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's going to be when the time comes. We're not. I already talked to Jeff. He's not going to upset anything right now because they're not going to utilize that property. But in the next year, we're going to have to clean that mess up. Yeah, figure right. it out. L legal mess up. I mean. Well, but, um, so for right now, I'm looking for a hiker. I I didn't know if I should. I was just gonna poke your brain to Huda. Uh, we don't. We don't. Our the Harvick section is much much shorter. Again, sure. yeah. maybe go check in at the uh, the bike shop. Yeah, but I, I over the years I've learned that uh, entrepreneurs are not necessarily the right people to have on a committee. Not nope. necessarily the entrepreneur starting it, but maybe someone who works there or I someone guess. who frequents it. I can Do they have to be a hard president? Yes. That's the idea. Okay. I can help you. I mean, you're, I, me and Eric can do it, but... Um, I mean, he's just looking for another for now, For right now, it's no big deal. we, we got to get the word out there properly. I thought I would go to their next meeting and maybe drag Eric along and... Okay. Um, I thought there might be somebody from the Memorial Valley Rail Trail Committee. Not you, Sherry. You know who's on that? Who? <laughs> uh, so Tracy leads it, and myself, and uh, Helen, and Helen Beatty, and um, So Tracy, Tracy would be a great person to go there. Because and Mallory, she has so the Mallory serves on that committee. She could give, dispel some of their right. myths about how... She's not going to be on that. No. I can't uh, imagine. Well, so how That's how like how me. I'll like yeah, and we'll figure it out. <laughs> figure out what's happening. Yeah, there ain't nothing getting away from us. I'll Are you just, ready to go? I just want to make one. I just want to make one comment on your your pre, your previous comments about reorganizing Rec Trail uh, Hard to Trail. Yep. Yeah, because we've been talking about that for a while, but we haven't actually. And while I understand from a select board point of view, there's definitely a, a efficiency in having fewer. Um, committees to administer and keep track of. Get that. Um, I just say, at least for the Harvard Trails Committee, there's a fairly long serving, dedicated group who care primarily about that trail system. And 
Yeah, that's all. I, I totally get that. Yeah. Trust me, I've been around here. Yeah, long, yeah you, know? you know them. Um, and I, I love them, and I'm, yeah. I'm appreciating what they've done. But the matter of the fact is, we now have three things that cost money. Yeah. And they used to be one thing asking for three thousand dollars, and now we've got three asked for five thousand dollars. So somebody's going to get told no. Yeah. So I would think with similar interests, it would be smarter for them to get together, figure out where they can best spend the money together, and and give ten grand to, to the group. My yep. my deal is when you have right. individual ask. Yeah. It, we're really close to saying individual knows. And people's taxes, you know, we're, we're talking about adding, we're, we're, we're losing, we need staff, we need to invest in our infrastructure, our quarry, our pit, our trucks, a new trailer. Something's got to give somewhere. So it's going to have to be, is it going to be recreation and trails or is it going to be salt and sand for our roads? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have so that. I wrestle with that same question just about every day. I know. I know you do. It's going right. to have salt. to be something we're going to. We're going to have to talk about in the, next, right. in the so, ensuing months. So that's, so, that that's so my just point out that yeah. you could save $5,000 in recreation, you only need to find 19 more places like that in order to cover this position. Right. Yeah. No. And, and once you supply well, something to the public, I, I it's think hard that, to I think come, tax, come town meeting time, come budget season, I think there needs to be some hard discussions about appropriations. And, and as long as I, everyone loves them, and, and I, you know, but we, we're we going to have to cut some things in order to, or we're going to have to raise taxes well, expeditiously. The appropriations are so not part of our, our budget. budget. So I was planning on They're uh, not in our budget. That's what I'm saying. It's taxpayer. Right. Don't, let's not get ahead. Um, well, I was going to bring something up in new business um, to oh, say that as, as, we, as we think about and I already put it in my minutes because this is what I was going to say is that as we go into budget season, thinking about some tough decisions this year about funding things or not funding things. And, and I'm not getting into any details, but when it's going to come down to, um, you know, we, we may not be liked as much, but honestly, like it's, there's a lot of little things that could change. And if we want to make some of these things happen, then there's some places that are going to have to be cut. And when you think about, you know, people that departments and areas where the money hasn't been spent for the last three years, then why would we continue to level fund something like we, we need to? We're going to have to think about tough decisions this yeah. year. Yeah. And my, and my thing on appropriations, is, as I understand, it's not our budget, but it's our taxes. It's uh, true. So I'm paying taxes. So it, if you want me to pay I can afford to pay $100 in taxes. Do I want, do I the taxpayer? Do I want to give $3,000 to the Beagle Club? Or do I want to give $3,000 towards an employee that the town needs? I want my money to go to the Beagle, to the Beagle, Beagle Club. Club. Yeah. <laughs> But you can do that, Danny. It's a tax write-off. Yeah. I know. So that's what I'm saying, and that's a great point right there. I know. If, if you want to, if you want to appropriate money to the Beagle Club, give them a donation, and you get a tax deduction. They don't, but that, that's why I picked them. So I hopefully we're not going to get in trouble. If you're, but if you're part those, of the Beagle Club and you're watching this, we're but those discussions, you. no, no. Okay, so I do but have a select board report. No one cares about that. I, I so. spent three days at the Grand Isle Lake House for a downtown retreat. Um, and <laughs> there was a lot of good information that happened there, and there was a lot of good work that happened. But the most exciting thing that came out of it was uh, my discovery that we can apply for transportation funds again for the bridge, and we can add we can add another application. To our existing uh -huh. one that's already approved. No, you can add. You can write a second one in the same for the same project in a second year. Oh. Wow. So. Good. Yeah, because we have two hundred already for that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's right. So we can. We might be able to <laughs> get a lot closer to closing that gap with one of those. That's great. Yeah. So that was that's, that was good news. That's good scoop. And that All was there. just like. The last day breakfast, like Jenny asking, um, uh, how, how's the bridge project going? Because we haven't talked to her because that money that doesn't that's the one that goes through 2025. So mm -hmm. yeah, 
That Great. is good cool. news. That was yeah. exciting. Any other select board reports, <coughs> new business or old business? I'm just going to comment that the auditors were here this this oh, week yeah. doing our fiscal year 24 audit. Um, so we have a regular audit and we have a single audit because we had more than 750,000 in federal expenditures. Um, so yeah, it's getting through the process. Good job. But yeah. How are uh, you know they're here for? A while. Uh, well, they are. They're only physic. They only came for three physical days, and then they took a bunch of stuff. Well, I mean, take stuff with them, but copies or whatever. Yeah. Like they got what they needed, and they're continuing to work on it. Um, and they'll come back for probably two or three days more for the single audit at a later date. Um, but yeah, they're they're gone for this week though. Okay. They're all smiles. Good. Yeah. Love it. Yep. Um, all right. Anything else? See that? We adjourn. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.